Hi, my name is Mark Kelly and I'm a Divisional Youth Specialist for Yorkshire South with Humber Division. Over the coming days and weeks, I'm going to interview Salvation Army officers, employees and volunteers to share a little bit of the good work that has taken place across our division. We are in unprecedented times and amidst these moments, we are going to look at how the Salvation Army is adapting to serve each of our communities. Thank you, Lynn and Wilson, for joining us this morning. Um, it's great to have you doing a mini interview for us. I wonder if we can start by hearing something we may not already know about you. We all know you as our divisional leader. But it might be nice to hear something that we don't already know about you. Okay. Well, well I'll start with that one. Um, I guess that's hard sometimes to think of those things because you think people know so much about you. But there's probably a couple of things, maybe, just quickly, I'll share with you. Um, one of the things I like to do is collect elephants and when we were in Singapore I started collecting them because they had an elephant parade and uh, by the time we left I had probably about 50 elephants in my herd of elephants that I've got and they're all different, they all um, have names to them so they all speak of different things and they're very significant to me so one of our cabinets takes control of a whole herd of elephants which was okay apart from when people came to visit us, as you would imagine quite often in Singapore. Everybody always when they left, brought, left us a gift of an elephant, which was okay for me, but Relton wasn't particularly impressed with that. And probably another thing you may not know about me is, uh, particularly in my younger days, one of the things I liked to do was, um, I was a bit of a theme park person, and uh, I loved the rides, the faster the better. Didn't like the spinny ones very much, but if they looped the loop, that was even better. So I'm a bit of a roller coaster thrill seeker, although I would have to confess as I get older, rides get a little bit more adventurous, and I get less so. Um, but I have a granddaughter who loves them, and she still tries to get me on every single theme park ride right that I can. So. I just want to say, does Relton join you on the rides? Uh, Relton's the opposite, and he holds the coach. <laughs> and um, I, I think for me, we, we are different. And uh, I think the thing that uh, I would say is people might not know that I'm a bit of a biker, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, own a Triumph Bonneville. And uh, when I can, I enjoy going out on that. And at the moment, uh, I'm into beekeeping, so I'm doing beekeeping lessons, so uh, <laughs> watch this space. <laughs> One of the things that um, not everyone will know, but I'm sure a lot of people that know you would know, is you're, you're a big Coventry fan. Um, we both are, we both are, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then, how, are you, how are you finding things at the moment with the kind of uncertainty of how the season will end? <laughs> uh, well, it's a bit tense. Uh, we are on, on our prayer mats. We're praying very hard. We know God supports Coventry City, and we believe that in the next few days we will be partying as the champions of the First Division. And there we're going to look forward to beating the Villa next year in the Championship. Um, so one of the things I want to do is um, a quick fire round. Um, and it's kind of like a would you rather round. I've got this little box of would you rather questions. Now, not of all of them are going to come from this box. But I'm just going to say two things, and I'd like to respond by saying which one you would rather have. Um, so I've got quite a few of each, um, but to get started, let's start with the first one. Is indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Outdoors. What about sweet or savoury? Sweet. Definitely sweet. <laughs> is that ice cream and people for you, Elton? Absolutely. <laughs> Winter or summer? Oh, summer. Summer. <laughs> um, dog or cat? Dog. Yeah, definitely dogs. <laughs> uh, TV series or films? TV series. Films. Oh, different. Uh, fruit or veg? Fruit. Veg. <laughs> okay, here's one. Glass half full or glass half empty? Mm. Half full. Half empty. <laughs> and a beach holiday or a city holiday? Beach. Beach. And we're going to end with more of a, an army themed one. Band or songsters? Songsters. Band. <laughs> <laughs> what a good balance. Um, so obviously at this moment in time we're in the middle of um, the pandemic of coronavirus. Um, 
I wonder if you could share with us a little bit about how your role has changed since the pandemic began. Yeah, um, I guess, yeah, our role really, the role itself probably hasn't changed that much, but the way we do it has had to change. And, um, you know, our role would be mainly to, to pastor people, to care for people, to get alongside people, to hear their stories and to just know what God's doing in their life and in their ministry and where they are. And that's a little harder to do at a distance. Um, so I guess we, we're more reliant on technology to do that. And we're all learning how to do that in a new way. Um, but I, I think that's probably the main thing. And, and also the good thing um, is that we... Although we haven't got as much time, perhaps, because we everything seems to take longer. I think, you know, it's it, we've got the space, maybe, but everything seems to take longer. But I think the joy of being able to be at home more, so you have that time to find the space that you need. And, and for me, um, once I get the things done I need to do, to be able to sit and just listen to God, as opposed to throwing things at him all the time. I've learned that in this time for me, what's changed is that space and listen to God, which is sometimes I speak, but I don't hear. And I think being able to listen to him is, has been really good for me that's changed in my life personally during this time. I don't think I've got anything to add to that, really. It's, uh, it is just how we do it that's changed. And uh, you would think that we would have more time, but it seems that we don't. And uh, it seems that, um, you know, personally, I'm life-sized out. Uh, I've done so many life-size calls uh, recently. But, um, you know, we are getting around it, and God is using us um, and uh, the army still. And uh, it's great to hear some of those stories and, and what's going on. So... Uh, yeah, it's, um, it carries on, but in a slightly different way. I mean, I think we've probably always wanted to, to hear God's voice. But I think what I have learned is that if we're going to learn from him, we need to listen for him. So we can only learn when we listen, because we don't know it. He knows it, but we don't. So as long as we, we do that, then we will learn from him. So having the time to do that has been really, really important. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, in our, our last interview, we had um, Josh Chapman, who was the Fort Valley Youth Forum. Um, the Fort Valley Youth Forum have submitted a question for you uh, today, and that question is, when we return to everyday life post-lockdown, what changes do you foresee the church making in response to what we've learned during this crisis? I think what we're finding in these days is there's a more openness uh, to God and a questioning and um, I think we need to take part in that and recognize that um, there are opportunities there. People are, um, yeah, if we look online, there are more people attending church at the moment than there ever has been and, uh, and I think again, a, lot, a bit like me, they will get fed up of doing it online but they want to try it in actual person when, when it comes out of the lockdown and uh, I think we need to be ready for that. I think also that um, people are more open to deeper conversations. When we've talked to uh, fellow officers, uh, one thing they're saying is that uh, their core folk are, talk are prepared to talk at a greater depth yeah. than they ever have done. And uh, I think that's a great thing, that uh, we will see a greater depth. And through that, what uh, our prayer is, is that we will see a shift in terms of leadership of core, uh, that there'll be a move away from that expectation that the officer does everything uh, to the expectation that actually uh, I can do so. I've been ministering now for all this time in lockdown by phoning my friends and everything, that actually I can be a, a serious part of this ministry. So there'll be less reliant on the officer or the professional or whatever you would like to call them and more of an understanding that I can minister, I've got a thing to play in, in this uh, congregation. Recently, when I go and do the shopping now, and it goes out there, over the, the announcement thing, they keep making the comment, we're all in this together. And um, it's been a really interesting thing as a church, seeing people uh, that 
I normally would have maybe had a conversation with on a Sunday. I'm now uh, having better communication, not seeing him physically, uh, because I'm making more of an active effort to speak to my church family. And I know that's a thing for many people across the country as well. Yeah, that leads nicely into my response, because I think what I was going to say was I think the greater appreciation for me will be each other. I think it's going to be that whole coming together again. You know, maybe in the past we have taken that for granted. We've taken for granted that, that being able to worship. I mean, Ralton and I have been mindful of that from an international perspective, that we are privileged people, that we can come together and worship safely. Um, and yet that's been taken away from us here in this country and other countries. Um, so I think when we come together, we'll appreciate that. We'll appreciate the fact that we, we do have each other, we can share together in a safe way and, and, and in an open way. Um, and I also think, um, I can't wait until, because I'm a people's person, love to be with people, and I just think when we do have our big celebration, however that looks, when we can all come together, I just want that to be such an appreciation of what God has done during this time and what he will continue to do. Uh, and a bit like um, the, the church when it started, you know, they gathered, but then they scattered. And I just think we need to know and understand to do that. So we come together, we gather, we enjoy each other, we praise God, and then we take that out and let's not forget that. Um, so, yeah, for me, I, I just hope from that, that's what we'll, we'll take into the future because of this. I think Lynn's looking forward to all the hugs that are going to come, and I'm looking forward to social distancing a little more kind of thing. So, um... Yeah, bring on the hugs, <laughs> bring on the hugs, yeah, be prepared, be afraid. <laughs> I, I, I wonder whether the change will be, Mark, that um, actually at the moment a lot of people come to worship to receive. Um, that's what they come, they just say, say, I'm coming to receive. Yeah. And actually what we want to see, the change, I think we will be grateful that we will come to worship to give kind of yeah. thing. And we will empty ourselves and share in that time, which we're looking forward to. Oh, thank you. Um, as, a, as a division, one of the things that is currently happening is the setup of a distribution centre in Doncaster. Um, I just wonder if you can share a little more about that uh, for everyone. Yeah, this uh, originates from uh, the National Appeal. Uh, where we appealed for money and donations for the uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, some of that money has been divided up and some of the money was allocated to set up uh, these 22 uh, distribution centres around the country. And obviously for our division, the central point was Doncaster and Martin has very kindly uh, agreed to lead that for us. So we, we get deliveries from uh, mainly Morrison's, and uh, one or two other donations as well. And uh, and we have uh, about a thousand uh, package people and core come in and they collect what they need to. And then hopefully uh, as they go down, we will get replenished. And uh, so it's really a, a way of uh, supporting core locally uh, to actually provide for the needs of those and I think that's going to increase in the coming yeah. days uh, rather than decrease. So uh, uh, we are grateful. We've started to distribute now. I think we've had one round uh, where all the poor have received what they want. And uh, we've just managed to get some more milk, which means we're ready for a second <laughs> round. <laughs> well, it's great to hear about kind of a national initiative that's taking place um, and how we're part of that bigger, bigger um, mission that is going on as well. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I have is, um, during this time, have you had a, a song that has particularly helped you during um, this moment in time? Or maybe it could be a piece of music, a band piece, um, a, a song. What, what, is, is there anything that's really helped you? Yeah. Um, it, as already mentioned, I'm a songster, so I prefer the singing. And um, being in the, in the car, um, really down to the office and very local. But right at the very beginning, um, of this, a song that I'd never heard before, and people may know it, but I, I didn't know it. And then it came on the radio a few more times, and I just really felt like God was trying to say something to me. Um, and the song is a Graham Kendrick song, which is entitled Holy Overshadowing. And it just really spoke into my heart that 
God was over all of this, that there was this holy presence. Uh, now, I've had to write the words down because it's still so new to me. I don't know them uh, that well yet, but I'll just share with you just a couple of the verses and really say, if you need to be blessed today, go and find Holy Overshadowing um, <clears throat> by Graham Kendrick. And it says this, So spread your wings of mercy over me and guard my heart with true humility. No shadow of the darkness pressing on, only the holy overshadowing underneath your wings. You are my shield and my glory. You are the lifter of my head. And though the storms may rage around me, I'll be safe within, beneath the holy overshadowing. And one of my favourite psalms is Psalm 91 anyway, where we know that we're within the wings, that he covers us and protects us. And that song just really spoke to me. And that has become quite a firm favourite of mine in these days and it's really helped me. Uh, my music taste, as you will know from the office, is a little more complex. And uh, uh, in all honesty, I've enjoyed listening to a lot of classical music. Uh, uh, I've got into opera in these uh, in the recent days. I've been uh, listening to The Marriage of Figaro, which has driven Lynn absolutely nuts, kind of thing. And, uh, but I found a great deal of comfort in that. Uh, if you were going to ask me a song, I think my song would be... Uh, he leadeth me, O blessed thought. And, uh, you know, I, I found that, uh, contemplating on that, where is God leading us? Uh, but uh, it's by his hand. And, uh, and wherever we're going, we're in that security that we're with him. So I would say by his hand, and, uh, and that'd be good. Great. Um, do you have any prayer requests um, that we can share with people who pray specifically for you? Uh, we know that you pray for... With many people across our division, and you take on responsibility. But you know, we can be praying for you at this moment in time. Well, I, I think our obvious prayer, along with the you know the whole world, really, is that clearly we want an end to this pandemic, um, an end to the pain and suffering for people and families. Um, and included in that would be a cure, a vaccine, something that will will help us get to the end of this. Um, and, I, and I think um, alongside that, I think our real, the real depth that we have in our prayers is for people to listen to God and just respond to him. Um, Routon and I are firm believers in the adventure that God takes you on when you just step out in obedience and, and just listen to him. And that's not necessarily officership, although we pray it so often for so many people. But, you know, the adventure that God wants to take you on is beyond anything, anything you could even imagine. Certainly, what are we now? 30, how many years in officership? 30? 35. 35 years in officership. And, and when we started on that journey, when we said yes, you know, we had no idea what God. So what we really pray for is that God will listen, that people will listen to God's voice and just step out in faith to whatever, whatever he's asking of them and to be strong, to be brave, to be courageous because God has got this and he wants so much from us as his people. That would be my real heartfelt prayer. I think my prayers would be uh, thinking internationally uh, if we acknowledge all that's going on around the world and uh, we're getting a number of... Um, information sheets now from international headquarters seeing what our colleagues are doing around the world that we would pray for them you know we uh, we pray for bangladesh yeah. for uh, for africa for india and they're doing some great stuff there and uh, we need to pray for them yeah. and then i think for the division we would pray that we don't look back yeah. that uh, we look forward uh, we were going to celebrate <laughs> god is good uh, dive into something new and our prayer is that together in these days, we do see what God is doing that's new and uh, and we dive into that together. So that's our prayers mm -hmm. uh, for the division. Yeah, dive into something new together, definitely. It's, I think there's a good theme there that we were meant to use and we hope <laughs> it Thank you both for that. Um, ahead of this um, mini interview, I requested a couple of prayers for you. So we've got a prayer from a young person in the division, and we've got a prayer from one of the officers in the division. So I'm just going to share these with you um, as we, we finish today. So our prayer is from Jen Shaw, um, she's from Multicore and in the Fourth Bar Board. 
Father, we pray that you protect and guide men and women as they continue to work for you and the people of our division. We ask for wisdom and strength as a support officer and other workers, as well as the work taking place for the community around the division. We pray also that they get a sense of rest and be one with you, that they are able to find comfort and strength in you. We are grateful for all that they have done for us in your name, and are thankful to you for the kind of with us. Thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love and presence. Amen. 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 From um, Lieutenant David Jones of the Hospital, and it says this Father God, we thank you for Railsman and Lynn, for their willingness to be led by you, as well as their obedience in leading us. As you continue that work, we pray that you will continually bless them with the holy wisdom and deep inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Give them courage in tough decisions and grace for themselves as they make those decisions. I pray that you will continually surprise them with the magnitude of your love, grace, and power, and that through them you will bring a spirit of revival to the York and South with Humber Division. We pray all these things in the merciful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning, and um, we look forward to sharing with you probably face to face in the coming weeks and months ahead. Yes. <laughs>